Welcome everyone. I'm Marcello Malgu. I'm the product manager here at the Yanafea. And today I uh, will introduce you to the latest enhancements, improvements, and features that we made available for the Yana 10.6. Before starting, it's good to mention that uh, it's been about a bit more than one year since our latest release, Diana 10.5. During this uh, period of time, we've been working hard not only to deliver to you new uh, features for you to improve your daily work, but also uh, to improve our code, our software architecture. This especially to improve in the uh, coming years, uh, faster delivery, so more releases in time, and also accelerate the release of new features for you. Uh, we also upgrade all our internal tools, so our third-party software that may so that can make our software more competitive and also up with the state-of-the-art tooling. And uh, we've been working hard on enhancing not only our graphical user interface but also our kernel and solver. I'll therefore start uh, discussing a bit the upgrade of our third-party softwares. We upgraded first of all. Uh, our Siemens Parasolis, so our geometric engine uh, to generate uh, the geometry of our model. We upgraded also uh, VTK. VTK is the tool for visualization of the model, the mesh, and the results of your problems. Then we did an upgrade of the CM2 measure, which is the engine used to discretize the geometry model into a discrete finite element mesh. And finally, also our uh, AutoCAD Real DWG import tool that allow all the user to import and heal CAD geometries. And finally, we upgraded the scripting platform Python to 3.10.1. We'll start showing our new improvements starting from uh, the lightning and uh, physics rendering. In the past, Diana used to have only one source of light in the model. But today, we have three different light sources that can enlight the model from three different points uh, in order to enhance the features of the model, such as valley, mountains, uh, corners, and so on. Uh, the user can uh, modify the source lights and add in also more shadow or more light. And in addition, the user can also take advantage of the physics-based rendering to make uh, the model more realistic by making the surface of the shapes more rough or more metallic. We've been working also on improving the user experience. Indeed, here uh, in these slides, we discuss about uh, the possibility for the user to switch between a 2D model uh, uh, from a 2D view on a 2D model to a 3D view. When a user is working on a two-dimensional model, such as plane stress, plane strain, generalized plane strain, and axial symmetric model, uh, the user sees usually just the XY front view. But now, from Diana 10.6, the user can switch just with one click to an isometric 3D view. This is very helpful for the user to uh, understand better some uh, 3D features of the model, such as the geometry of beam, shell, and uh, infinite shells. But also, this is valuable when the 2D models is very elongated, such uh, as a plane strain or a plane strain model of a very elongated beam, and the user wants to display a prop curve diagram orthogonal to uh, the X-ray plane. As you see in this slide. For instance, you see that in Diana 10.6, when the user is modeling a frame structure denoted by beams, these in the 2D view are just a simple one-dimensional line, as you see in the image on the top right. But just with one click, now the user can move to a 3D view, see the image at the bottom right, where the user can see the 3D geometry of the beams. So you see here the features of the cross-section. This is very valuable for the user to understand the orientation of the axis of the beam and uh, if the input provided for the cross-section are correct. 
In a plain strain model, also the user is able to see the thickness of infinite shells. Uh, the user experience has been improved also in the action menus. For instance, you see here in this slide uh, that the filter for the element class, so the list that you see at the bottom of the right picture, is being now filtered. And this filter is based on the load type that is uh, selected by the user. Therefore, the user is not going to have any more a long list of element classes, but a reduced amount of element classes. Therefore, this helps the user to speed up the modeling and also reducing the possibility for the user to make mistakes. We also improve the consistency in our graphical user interface. Uh, let's see, for instance, the edit analysis phase menu, where the labels of the different sections, for instance, geometry shape set, geometry reinforcement set, geometry part sets, are now consistent with the labels used in the geometry section of Diana E. Um, and here we see also a very valuable improvement for the definition of uh, boundary conditions. By boundary condition, I mean thermal boundary condition or uh, uh, groundwater flow boundary condition. Uh, this enhancement in the GUI uh, in, uh, improves what was uh, available in the past. In the past, the user had to first define a boundary condition, uh, for instance, prescribed head or prescribed temperature, assigning the value of the prescribed temperature or prescribed head, and then selecting a number of geometric entities, such as uh, shapes, uh, faces, edges, or vertices. In a second step, then the user had to repeat the same selection to define the fixed uh, potential, for instance, fixed temperature or set. In Diana 10.6, now the user uh, can do everything much uh, faster because as you see in the left image on the right, uh, you see that the, the user when is opening the boundary condition menu, in this case for groundwater for boundary condition, the user is selecting uh, the type of uh, prescribed head, and then assigning the value and selecting all the geometries. After this, the user can select an old already defined fixed head or creating a new one as shown in the menu on the right, where the list of selection is done automatically by the Yana uh, This helps a lot the user because in this way, the user doesn't need to reselect all the geometrical entities by hand twice and therefore speeding up the workflow and again, decreasing the possibility for the user to make mistakes during modeling. Um, we then improve also the way Diana is uh, detecting interaction uh, between uh, shapes. Uh, so all the information that have to be managed by Diana uh, before and during meshing. In this, the past, every time the user had to mesh the model, Diana was re-evaluating uh, all the shapes that were adjacent to each other. In Diana 10.6, this is done only the first time the mesh is generated. If the user is then going to modify the geometry by modifying some shapes or adding new shapes or deleting all shapes, Diana, before meshing, is going to re-evaluate only the new or modified shapes. Therefore, this is a great benefit uh, for performance in uh, meshing. Uh, it's good to mention that uh, this information are not only uh, stored in Diana while using Diana itself, so uh, without turning, uh, closing it, but also are stored in the Diana portable file, so the DPF file. And uh, this information are valuable again when you reopen an old DPF file. We improve also the hierarchy defining the mess uh, seeding. Uh, we call it a hierarchical lookup. Now we define a rule for hierarchy in the definition of the mess size. You see, for instance, the image on the top right, you see two sheet. On the one on the left, we define the uh, mess seeding on the edge 
uh, highlighted with uh, blue. And then we define also the mesh size of the elements in the sheet on the right. These two sheets are adjacent to each other. When we go to mesh, what's going to define the mesh size uh, along the shared edge is the definition of the mesh sheeting on the blue edge. This is because the blue edge is a lower level entity than the face on the right. And indeed, as you see in the image at the bottom right, we see that the size uh, is much higher along the edge than at the interior of the sheet on the right. So the user now knows what to expect uh, for uh, when uh, mesh sheeting or mesh size are assigned a different level of the geometries. We made available some improvements also for uh, unstructured mesh. In this case, in Diana 10.6, so we improve uh, the speed for generating an unstructured mesh and also reduce the memory users. These two improvements are valuable and uh, can be seen especially for large meshes. We decrease the presence of uh, low order elements in a hexahedral uh, dominant mesh. Therefore, we don't have or we have less tetrahedrons and pyramid elements that sometimes can be annoying uh, in uh, non linear analysis and uh, for having better results. And finally, we also have a smoother mesh along uh, curves and surfaces of our geometric models. So we've been able for such a mesh to improve the performance and the usage of memory and also to have a better and smoother uh, mesh. We move now towards uh, the improvements that we made available for uh, uh, results visualization. As we see here, we discuss about pro curves in 2D mode. So when we have a two-dimensional model, that can be plane stress, plane strain, generalized plane strain, or axis symmetric. Uh, now, by default in Diana, the user will see the, the prop curve um, projected on the x-ray plane. In the past, the prop curve by default was orthogonal to the x-ray plane, and therefore the user had to change the settings of the prop curve by going into the property grid. This was taking time, and therefore we improved this. And as you see, the default result will be like the one on the right of this slide. And uh, it's the prop curve is projected on the x-ray plane and orthogonal to the line defining the prop curve. The user then can, of course, change the settings of the prop curve, change the, use or the orientation of the prop curve, for instance, along the global x-axis or the global y-axis, or have it in the outer plane or in direction, especially when you want to see your 2D model in a 3D configuration as discussed in the, uh, in the previous slides. A valuable announcement also in ProCurves is that now the user can generate animations where it's possible to see the variation of the contour plot together with the change in the prop curve. As you see in the model on the right of the slide, uh, it's a simulation with uh, two tunnels. And you see that during the simulation, uh, both the contour plot and the prop curve are changing during time all, or when the load is changed. Indeed, you see here at this moment, the prop curve is constant. As soon as we start removing uh, the soil, the location of the tunnel, we'll see that the uh, trend of the prop curve is not anymore constant, but you see a variation along the x-axis. And now we move towards the improvement that we made available for our material modeling and our solver. Uh, for ACI material models, we now have the possibility to view the chains of uh, some material parameters with respect to the maturity of the elements. In the past, the user was providing input parameters, but no feedback was given to the user. Now, in the 10.6, when the user provides input parameters, 
it's possible immediately to see the variation of the ES modulus, the tensor strength, and the compressive strength with respect to the maturity. This is a valuable tool, not only more consistent with what we have with other uh, material models, but also because in this way the user can check uh, if the input provided are correct. Uh, for the Hooper model, which is typically used for the modeling of rocks, uh, now we made available also the possibility to take into account of uh, undrained conditions. Uh, as you see in the image on the left, so we made several, uh, uh, apart from the implementation, sorry, we made also uh, several uh, verifications on the model we implemented. And uh, especially for the cases shown in the slide here, we have a triaxial test and we can see clearly uh, the difference between the results that uh, we obtain when running the model with a drain and with undrained condition. So uh, this is again, more valuable for the modeling of soil and an extension on the Hooper model. Again, for the analysis of soil, we made available a new parameter, the so-called L parameter for the van Newton equation, uh, that is uh, discussed in several scientific paper, but also available in other commercial software. Uh, this parameter in Diana has a default value of 0 0.5, which is the typical one that is used by most of the people, but still the user can change it and tune it in order to change the relative conductivity of the soil with respect to the pressure head. So we provide a default value that the user can accept as is or change it for the benefit of the analysis. And I'm going to discuss at the moment now uh, two very valuable improvements that we made in Diana 10.6. The first one is the possibility in uh, phased and stage construction analysis to change the material class that is assigned to a shape. In the past, the user indeed uh, couldn't do this, so couldn't change, for instance, the material class assigned to a shape from, for instance, soil to rock or vice versa. And uh, but now this is possible. So in the past, the user had to create, uh, for instance, most of the time, two overlapping shapes to the first shape, assigning the property of a soil, and then to the seconds, for instance, the shape of uh, the, the material class concrete. Then in the phase of stage contraction analysis, deactivating one shape and activating the other one. Now in the Yana 6 this is not needed anymore. Just one shape that it's active all the time, just need to change the material class. So saving a lot of time and also reducing the risk of making errors. It's good to mention anyway that this new feature has one very important assumption, which is the one of that we called rebirth of element. That means that when there is a change of material class, since it is a consistent change in the properties of that shape, we assume that the uh, strain, stress, and material uh, parameters are reset to zero. And this is something very much important to keep in mind during the analysis. And next to that feature, we also made available the possibility for the user during a phase of stage construction analysis to change the behavior of an in connection from a rigid to structural interface and vice versa. This is very valuable. Let's see, for instance, the example that is shown at the bottom left of this slide, where we assume that uh, the gray shapes may uh, are used to define a, a L-shaped concrete wall. In the first stages or phases of the analysis, these can be used to model the soil, thanks, and then later a concrete wall. And this is uh, made available thanks to the previous announcement we discussed. So in the first phases, when uh, the gray shapes are used to model the soil, the connection on the right of the retaining wall is a, a rigid connection. Then when the retaining wall is installed, that connection can be 
uh, uh, used to model a structural interface, and the four used to model uh, structural uh, structure soil interactions. Improvements have been done anyway also to the interface behavior, uh, especially in Diana 10.6. It's not possible to derive the material properties of an interface based on the material properties of the adjacent soil. So this feature is very valuable for modeling of geotechnic uh, models and geotechnic problems. So as you see in the menu show on the right of this slide, now the user can very easily uh, trigger the material property to be derived from uh, the material properties of the adjacent soil. In addition, if the adjacent soil is defined by a power law based stress dependent stiffness, then also the stiffness of the interface can be stress dependent. Power law based stress dependent stiffness is available in material models like the hardening soil model. And in this case, so the interface can behave more or less uh, in, uh, stiffer depending on the depth and on the stress of the soil next to the interface itself. We have been doing also improvements for seismic analysis. So for uh, response spectrum analysis, now in the IANA 10.6, uh, response spectrum analysis has been extended with uh, the option to specify the model damping and frequency dependent spectra. This feature is very valuable when in your model you have a part of the model that uh, have very different uh, damping. So the user here specify different uh, spectra uh, in combination with a uh, explicitly specified model damping ratio in parts of the critical uh, uh, damping factor, or can also uh, define the damping ratio based on calculated strain energy based model damping ratios derived from free variation eigenvalue analysis. In both cases, anyway, during uh, the computation, then the spectral acceleration to assign to the different parts of the model are determined from the model damping that is either assigned by the user or derived based on a strain energy based model damping ratio. And the frequency damping spectra, so you see, for instance, the table on the bottom right. And the interpolation is done using a double logarithmic interpolation. Again, for seismic analysis, or any way more in general, for transient uh, dynamic analysis in the past, the user had to switch on the transit effect. Also, in the analysis before the transient uh, dynamic analysis, so if the analysis before this one were static or quasi-static analysis, the user had to turn these type of effects on since the very beginning. This was cumbersome. Sometimes the user couldn't understand the reason for this. And therefore, we improve it. Now the user has to turn on the transient effect only when the transient dynamic analysis is going to be executed. So it's much faster the setup of the analysis in this case. Uh, then for a staggered analysis, more specifically for double staggered analysis, in Diana 10.6, the user doesn't need anymore to define a dummy structural analysis in the setup of the analysis. As you see in the image on the left, indeed, we have two uh, flow analyses. First a transient heat analysis and then a transient groundwater flow analysis. Between them, we have a dummy structural analysis. This was needed by Diana to set up and uh, the, 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 the matrices for the later ones and store all the information for the, from the transient analysis. Uh, nowadays, in Diana 10.6, you will uh, set up the analysis according to what shows on the panel on the right. And you see that between the transient heat transfer analysis and the transient groundwater flow analysis, there is no need anymore to create a dummy structural analysis. So once more, for the user, it's much easier to set up the analysis for a double staggered analysis. 
we are towards the end. And uh, what we made available in the Yanate.6 is the possibility by default to connect anchors to infinite shells. In past version of the ANA, uh, anchors were automatically uh, uh, connected to ship L walls. That was uh, very valuable. We got very good feedback from our customers. But also, we get the request from some of you to make this available also for infinite shells. So, to have by default in Diana anchors connected to infinite shells without the use of connections. And now this is possible in Diana 10.6. This is the typical case for modeling of rock bolts in uh, tunnel linings. As you see in the image at the bottom of the slide, you see uh, a model with a tunnel and uh, a set of rock bolts gradually. And you see the result, you see the effect of the rock bolts on the, on the tunnel lines and also the, the, uh, uh, the axial force in the rock bolts. And uh, so you see that these are automatically connected to the, to the tunnel lining. With this slide, I'm at the end of the presentation for the new release of the 10.6. I want to thank you very much for your attention. I want also to thank all my colleagues for this new release of Diana, Diana 10.6. I also want to release my colleagues that made this webinar uh, possible. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.